So hello everybody, this is Bunte Joe here and just here at Petticoat Creek Conservation Area and thought to record a short awada for the internet. So I thought that maybe you could start with a little bit of meditation so it can look about three feet in front of us and close our eyes. And can focus in on the breath. can know when it's coming in and know when it's going out and if one breathes in a long breath can just know I'm breathing in a long breath and if one breathes in a short breath can just know I'm breathing in a short breath. And can focus in on the breath at the tip of the nose. And when watching the breath at the tip of the nose, can try not to control it too much. Just being aware of the breath as it comes in and goes out. And this is one strategy, one perception for breath meditation. And if the mind wanders away to the past or the future, can just bring it back to the present moment, to the breath. And before we finish meditating, can spread thoughts of goodwill, wishing all beings everywhere happiness and ease. Okay, and can 
open our eyes and do a bit of a short Dhamma discussion for the internet. <clears throat> Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddhang sarananga chami dhammang sarananga chami sangang sarananga chami Dhatiyampi buddhang sarananga chami dhatiyampi dhammang sarananga chami dhatiyampi sangang sarananga chami Tatiyampi buddhang sarananga chami tatiyampi dhammang sarananga chami tatiyampi sangang sarananga chami So hello everybody. Hope that everybody is having a good day wherever it might be. And yeah, just headed down here to uh, Petticoat Creek uh, Conservation Area, which is on the border between Pickering and Scarborough in Ontario. And it's been uh, kind of a nice uh, day today with lots of sun. So a good day to uh, get out here. And so actually this uh, Tuesday, there was a bit of a Q&A at the end of the uh, meditation. And somebody asked a good, well, there was a few good questions. One of the ones that somebody asked was, um, you know, should, uh, uh, if, we're, if we're practicing meditation, we, uh, we have a kind of uh, defilement that we're working with, like, um, you know, uh, like anxiety or something like that. Is it better to like uh, treat like anxiety or these kind of uh, surface level emotions with uh, like psychotherapy or something like that, and then uh, you know just use the dhamma for the sake of like ending kama is was the specific uh, question, and so uh, you know um, basically the Buddha's teachings there there's something that can be used to eliminate all kinds of suffering. So we want to uh, use them to eliminate you know anxiety, <laughs> ill will, restlessness, and basically any defilement that comes up, any kind of thing that comes up that could cause one to suffer in the mind, the Buddha's teachings, the Dhamma, have the capability of uh, eliminating that. And we as meditators, it's within our range as meditators to eliminate that. And so this is one of the kind of important things about uh, meditation practice is that it's not something where we just try to figure out what, what it's like at the highest level and then go, you know, straight to the highest level. It's kind of wherever a person's, um, wherever a person's uh, defilements might be, that's what they work on. That's what they try to eliminate. And it's kind of like if somebody had, uh, you know, like a messy room. And, uh, you know, people know that, uh, you know, say they had a room with, uh, you know, uh, like a whole huge bunch of laundry strewn all over. They had like mold growing from the walls. They had coffee stains in the floor. They had you know, leftover chip bags and chips all over the place and, uh, you know, food on the floor that was going bad. And, uh, you know, a person saw a uh, a show and on that show, uh, the person had this really clean house. It was totally clean. It's kind of maybe a show about how to clean (laughs) something. And they showed how to polish, you know, the wood furniture at the end of a cleaning session. And so, you know, for that person who's got the, the room that's still dirty like that, you know, of course, you know, they can still polish their wood furniture or whatever or try that out, but it's not going to make their room look like the one on TV. You know? So first, what they want to do is get rid of the obvious big things, you know, maybe take all the old food off the floor, you know, bleach the wall <laughs> with some uh, bleach or cut out the area with mold in the drywall, replace it with a new drywall. And, uh, you know, take the big bag of dirty laundry and throw it in the washing machine. All these things kind of a a lot less exciting than like putting the final shine on the furniture in uh, in an already clean house. But although those things might be a lot less exciting, it might seem like something that's not directly related to like a transcendent truth. These are where we uh, actually gain uh, a lot of our knowledge on how the mind works and kind of this, the things that tend to pull a person off. We learn a lot directly about uh, hatred, craving, and delusion by trying to eliminate these grosser aspects of hatred, craving, and delusion in our, in our minds, trying to eliminate, you know, strong anxiety, strong fear, strong jealousy, strong hatred. These are all the defilements that we're trying to use our meditation practice to eliminate. 
And when a person tries to eliminate with the, these things with the Dhamma, what they tend to come up against is that it requires a lot of like endurance, like a lot of perseverance. Basically, you know, using your meditation topic so that we get a sense of having a refuge outside of external things. And then when we have this kind of uh, refuge, this internal refuge that we're building, it's easier to give some bad habit up and put up with the difficulty <laughs> that comes with quitting whatever that bad habit is. Because often things like fear, anxiety, uh, you know, jealousy, anger, those negative emotions are often have a flip side in something that we, one really likes. So, you know, fear, anxiety can have a flip side in like a strong attachment to a person or strong attachment to a job and a very strong sense of ownership around these things. And so in learning to cut this kind of anxiety or, or whatever else it is, one also finds that one has to learn to cut this attachment. And so in doing this, you know, it's good to have this kind of refuge inside because essentially what makes these things hard to give up is that oftentimes one can take these external things as a kind of refuge. Somebody has very strong jealousy. They might have, say, uh, say there's somebody who's a very beautiful uh, face or a very good job and they get jealous when they meet somebody <laughs> who has a more uh, you know, attractive like face or, or, or a better job, then in that case, uh, that person tends to have built this sense of self around their face, around their job. And in order to overcome jealousy uh, around these things, a person has to basically detach themselves from these things that they like, from these things that they love. And in doing this, one has, uses their meditation practice, uses this coming back to the object again and again as a means of kind of giving the mind practice in separating itself from these things. And so when one starts to think, okay, you know, I'm getting really jealous at this person, may you be well, essentially you have to let go of the job a little bit. Essentially you have to let go of the perception of, you know, maybe being like, a, you know, the Wicked Witch in Snow White and kind of, you know, I want to be the most, you know, <laughs> fairest of them all and Snow White's the most fair and she wants to kill her. <laughs> and so in other words, if we want to get rid of this kind of hatred and jealousy, then we have to let go of being the perception of the fairest of them all, have to let go of the perception of being this top person in the job. Because the reality of these things is that they're subject to change. These things arise and then they pass away. So when we have this meditation practice as a refuge, we have this uh, as one of our refuges, as a practice, a training, a refuge in the Dhamma, then what we end up doing is we end up having this source of happiness that doesn't depend on these external things. So what it means is when we try to eliminate these gross external defilements, gross jealousy, gross fear, gross anxiety, we learn a lot about the process of attachment and clinging. We learn a lot about the way that our mind works and we also learn how to detach ourselves from these things ourselves, Because you don't kind of skip from, you know, uh, you know, being, say, like a boxer and boxing like, you know, the most junior guy, you know, when you first start training and you're, you're boxing and you're, you start off boxing like an amateur, somebody the same level as you, you don't go from that jumping right to the championship. <laughs> you have to like, you know, box for the end of uh, all kama, for the complete elimination of kama. You kind of build your skills up to that level. And the building up of these skills happens with the elimination of these gross defilements. It happens with the el elimination of gross anxiety, gross anger, you know, gross jealousy. These kind of gross bad habits that, we, that one knows is pulling one down, that's the area, that's the field for our Dhamma practice. That's, we don't have to look any further than that really. We don't have to look to high esoteric principles or anything like that. That's where we look to train our minds. That's where we look to eliminate suffering. And when we turn our minds in this way, turn our minds to look at these gross things, you know, these things that might seem like, okay, not directly related 100% to Nibbana, it doesn't seem that transcendent, maybe I should take care of this with the more conventional means. When we turn our minds to these gross things, that's when we're building the skills that we need to move higher in the Dhamma. And it's like climbing a ladder, you start at the bottom rung, and by stepping on that bottom rung and pulling yourself up, that's how one learns to climb higher. You, can't, you don't just jump from the bottom of the ladder right up to uh, the top. So in other words, all these defilements that arise in the mind, whether they're like anxiety, craving, whatever gross defilement it is, it all comes under the rubric, under the purview of the Dhamma. It all comes under the purview of our practice. Wherever suffering arises in a person's mind, that's where we use our meditation practice to train our mind. 
And in doing so, we gain the skills that we need to overcome these defilements, for one thing. We gain a knowledge that we can do this independently. And we don't need a lot of external things to overcome suffering in our mind. And in gaining these skills, we set the stage, we set the foundation for moving higher up the ladder, for moving up to the next rung. Because we, this is the way that one moves up in the Buddhist teaching, step by step, kind of, you know, uh, fight by fight, I guess you could say, you know, if you're a boxer, until we meet the heavyweight, you kind of, you know, Mike Tyson, which is, you know, a widja in the mind. It's kind of ignorance and craving. These, these things are possible to knock out once and for all. But we can do these things so long as we don't neglect our basic training, so long as we don't neglect developing the skills we need, and they're developed right here. They're developed with the defilements that are obvious in the mind, the defilements that we know about. This is where we train our mind to eliminate the higher ones and to find happiness. Okay, so I think that leave that for reflection and hope that everybody has a great day and all the best till next time.